Greetings, greetings, greetings. It's Eric Backer, New Zealand naturopath, author of Candida Crusher. Oops, my chair just went down. Thanks for tuning into my video today. Today I'm going to talk about the seven best ways to stop craving sugar and carbs. Okay, This is going to be quite a useful video for you, especially if you're a person who wants to lose a bit of weight, maybe my age, you know, sort of young guy, put on a little bit of weight, or young girl wants to lose a little bit of weight or you could be one of these Millennials you know you could be a person 20s 30s starting to get a job got a good income getting a bit complacent not exercising enough working your tail off doing maybe IT work or computer work not eating properly not exercising enough you could be tired not sleeping properly maybe mood disorder either way you might just want to be a person who wants to feel amazing and look amazing. Well, this is a key video because we're going to show you some ways on how you can stop craving crap in your diet. There's so much crap out there. I had a good time in the States. I just came back with my wife. We were over there for about 12 days on a, on a conference. We spent a bit of time with some friends in Los Angeles and we traveled to Las Vegas. I couldn't believe how much crap people eat when I saw it, you know. Uber drivers, you know, drinking big cans of Coke and stuff, and people drinking energy drinks, and so much alcohol consumption, it's just unreal. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the ways on how to control what you eat. Get enough sleep, number one. You need to get enough sleep. Now, I'm a baby boomer, but many people, younger people, like my kids, I've got, you know, they're not kids, my daughter's 23, but younger people today just don't get enough sleep. When I was that age, we had no distractions, no Google, no Facebook, nothing like that. Google came in, what, 98, but before that, there wasn't really any, any internet. And, uh, you know, we relied on video cassette recorders, you know, maybe to watch stuff. And uh, there was no Netflix, there was no cell phones. People got to sleep a lot earlier. Young people today just don't get enough sleep. So poor sleeping habits lead to poor eating habits. And poor sleeping habits mean you're going to get tired. And when you're going to get tired, what are you going to grab for? Something with sugar in it, something with caffeine in it to push you up. All right? So poor sleep leads to uh, fatigue and stress. It's going to drive a demand for sugar to give you a boost or caffeine. Enough sleep gives you more energy and you feel more rested. You feel way better. So that's habit number one. If you can't get enough sleep or you're not prepared to, stop the video now and then go and try that before you come and watch the rest of the video, all right? So that's number one. Number two, you need to eat a breakfast. It's not mandatory, but you really want to eat something in the morning before lunchtime, a good protein meal. It could be eggs, it could be a good cereal, but you need to have some type of a protein load in the morning. It's going to set yourself up. It's going to really help your metabolism cope with peaks and troughs in energy through the day. A good breakfast in the morning is a great starting point for really good energy uh, and it also will stop you wanting you know coke or muffin or fries or crap like that during the day right three good meals a day make a big difference towards craving sugar especially if you eat quality healthy fresh foods okay number three don't fight hunger okay if you're hungry it's good to be a little bit hungry here or there when people feel a little bit hungry oh I'm hungry I'm hungry I've got to eat something they panic, okay? especially people with anxiety. They straight away want something because they think that it's bad to be a little bit hungry. You guys have got no idea what it means to be hungry. I mean truly hungry. Hungry to the point where you need a pair of socks. All right, Real hunger is seriously bad and it's cruel. And many people die of starvation around the world. Now I can assure you guys you're not dying of starvation. All right? So... Don't fight hunger. If you're a little bit hungry, let it be. Okay? These funny churning sounds in your gut often mean that the digestion's working really well. Right? I read some interesting stuff down here that I found. And it's really cool. Eating and chewing 10 to 30 times. That's why I'm not a big fan of juices or smoothies with lots of fruit and veggies in because you're not chewing anything. And poor chewing leads to poor pooing. Right? Swallowing four to eight seconds, churning food two to four hours in the gut. So you could have eaten a meal and it's churning away after three or four hours. And I'm hungry. My stomach's making a noise. Of course it is. It's digesting food. Some people misinterpret that for hunger. 
and they put more food in the gut on top of the food they got in their tummy. That's like a, a cement mixer mixing water and cement and it's making a noise and you're trying to throw more in. You're going to get overload. Don't do it. And then it takes three to five, three to five hours to absorb this into the body. Okay, So the body's going to extract what it needs from the food it's churned up. And then you've got compaction. So you're going to have waste product development. All right, the body extracts everything it wants out of that food. It starts moving down to the lower part of the bowel. It's compacting the wastes and it's full of bacteria. And then it can take several days for the compaction to take place. But if you're eating a lot of fiber, plenty of water, you're going to feel a lot better and move it out pretty quick. And then elimination. So hours and hours of time. Now during that period of one meal being digested, be careful, think about it. You must have seen some of those videos on YouTube about big snakes devouring like animals. Do you watch stuff like that? Or do you just watch crazy cat videos? Go and look at a YouTube video of an anaconda devouring an animal. Okay, a big snake in the Amazon. It's not going to eat for four or five months after that because it's going to devour that animal and digest it slowly and eliminate it. It's not going to be eating uh, an antelope one day and a crocodile the next and a monkey the next. It's not going to do that. It's going to eat one big thing and then digest it, absorb it, eliminate it. I'm not suggesting that you have uh, 25 Happy Meals at McDonald's and then don't eat for six months. The point I'm making is eat a meal and then take your time, wait for it to digest before you throw more food on top. And if you feel a little bit of hunger during the time when it's digesting, don't misinterpret that for hunger because it's not. Eat meals regularly, point number four. Okay? Try and eat regularly. You don't have to look at your wristwatch and say, it's 12.06, I'm going to eat now. Don't have to do that. But you will feel little drops during the day when your blood sugar is dropping, when you're getting a little bit more tired, and you eat some food and you pick up. So be aware of that tiny little bit of tiredness and that pick up after food. And that will give you an indication of when you should be eating. All right? Give yourself about a good one hour window roughly each day for when you normally would eat, say between 12 to 1, maybe between 5 to 7 p.m. So, but try and eat regular meals at regular times. Number five, make crap difficult to get. So when you go shopping next, and you're going to buy the stuff that you get, you know, toilet paper, tissues, and those are the only two things you should buy from the shop anyway, or soap, the rest is all crap. But if you go shopping, don't, you know, grab stuff like Coca-Cola or fries or whatever, chips, chocolate bars. If you've got stuff in the home, you're going to eat it. If it's difficult to get, it's much less likely that you're going to snack on crappy foods. So make good decisions when you go shopping. All right, not impulse decisions. And for that reason, they always say you should go shopping when you've had a meal, because then you're less likely to eat and buy, buy and eat on impulse. Healthy alternatives. We've talked a lot about this in previous videos. Making good choices when you eat and not making bad choices. Eating fruit for snacks, for example, away from meals is good. You know, green apples or berries or avocados. And when your digestion is really good like me, you can have you know, a wide variety of fruits. I eat a lot of different fruits. Um, I think that's about it. And eat a, eat a variety of foods as well, like eat a balanced you know, amount of food. Plenty of proteins, plenty of fats in your diet. And you can use fats with cooking, you can put fats on salad or vegetables. Good protein choices, my favourites are salmon. The salmon in New Zealand is so nice. I tried the salmon in uh, Los Angeles, I just wasn't really impressed with it. It was really bland. I think you need that cold water. Uh, especially to get really good flavor uh, in fish, and it makes a big difference. Fish around the tropics, it's half baked, the water's so hot, the fish is probably half cooked by the time you eat it anyway. Um, but warmer water doesn't tend to really make fish taste very really good. But I had some really nice organic chicken when I was in uh, Los Angeles, so you can get good quality proteins no matter where you are, right? And fats, of course, avocados or coconut oil or butter, and there are many different proteins with fat in like lamb. Organic lamb is going to have a good fat in it. So they're quite good things to eat. Nuts will give you some fats as well. So eat a variety of these foods in your diet at regular times.
You don't need special diets to uh, maintain good health. You need common sense. Basic foods, lots of sleep, plenty of water, and get rid of people in your life that annoy you. Those things are going to go a long way to keeping you well. So there's a couple of tips for you really on how to control you know, the craving for carbs and sugars. If you can control that in your life, you can control a lot. Hope this was some good information for you. Take care.